May I present to you Group Q? Good afternoon, my name is Kit Bacchus. I'm part of Group Q. I have um, a vast amount of experience and along with the engineering technical aspect, I'll combine it both and help on improving certain projects and I'll be a major contribution to this group. My name is Varun Katvaru, I'm a member of Group Q and my skills to the group are both my triple ET, electrical, electronic and engineering technology background and also my skill sets in engineering drawing software as well as um, design 3D modern software such as Google SketchUp and also editing for like PowerPoints and basically my creativity when it comes to like ideas and concepts and coming up with them. My name is Shravan Rangbir. I am a member of Group Q. I believe I can contribute to this group by using my background in the automotive fields, specifically in transmissions and transaxles. Furthermore, I am focused in design software such as AutoCAD and SolidWorks, which directly reflects on my creativity. My name is Daniel Babal. I am the leader of Group Q. And my contribution attributes would be to ensure cooperation between the members of my group to suggest logical methods of resolving problems with an open mind to my colleagues' opinions and to lead my team on a progressive path toward completion of this project, ensuring that we stay on target with what is required of us. This design project entails the reverse engineering of the TWH1650 fruit and vegetable processing machine. The machine consists of a combination of logically ordered subcomponents such as receiver belt conveyor, washer, water absorber, and rotary packing table, each playing a vital role towards processing the produce to a desired product. The TWH1650 is frequently used in the agriculture sector by agriculturists, farmers, or retailers. It can be used in a small scale or a large scale. This machine serves to increase productivity by cleaning the produce with little manual labor at a faster rate when compared to laborers performing the same task. Our group was selected to analyze and improve the flaws of the rotary packing table subcomponents, thus increasing its efficiency. From this being said, our aim of our project is to redesign the rotary packing table, making it more efficient and easier to produce a large amount than what is being produced right now. The customer requirements and design specification are very close when designing the machine. Specification basically in other words are special requirements that are required when designing the product. Our specification are various types when designing the TWH1650, such as it must be able to produce 3.52 meter cube of produce. It must also be able to process many raw products such as apples, tomatoes, pepper, cucumbers and various others. It also uses electricity that are being able to power the electric motors and it should be run on 115 to 230 volts. The volume of water implemented in the system when cleaning the fruits and vegetables should be equal to or greater than the volume of water that is placed into the system. It also should be assumed that the system runs on room temperature of 32 degrees C. Here we have the pairwise comparison in which we calculated the relative weightings of each objective. As can be seen, safety use is the most prioritized objective. Certain constraints and assumptions were noted before we pushed forward to redesign the system. These constraints are considered variables that cannot be changed. We assume that only one type of produce is processed at a time, for instance, we wouldn't process lemons and limes at the same time. This would be counterproductive and would require avoidable sorting. We assume that the area available for the system is fixed to the area of the worksite. We assume that only a 115 to 30 volt supply is available. And lastly, we assume water is brought in at top pressure. Over here we have the first component of the TWH1650 which is the conveyor belt. 
it is driven by a drive gear and shaft on this side of the conveyor which is connected to an electric motor via a chain system. The conveyor can be adjusted on this side on its free rolling shaft by a treaded shaft with a bolt and this allows you to adjust the tension of the, the conveyor belt to accommodate different types of produce and their weight. The guards on the side here are used to prevent large numbers of produce from falling off the conveyor as it moves towards the washer. This here is part of the washer setup and this is the electric motor that powers the conveyor, the washer and the water absor absorber component. The electric motor is connected to a drive pulley via a V-belt, a rubber V-belt and this drive pulley um, transmits power to the water absorber via a chain belt and also it has a connection on the other side that powers the washer roller bristles and the conveyor belt. On this end here we have end bearings for the bristle roller, rulers in the washer. These bearings are run on this flat piece of metal here and helps line up the bristle rulers properly so that the produce can move smoothly through the washer. So here we have the hose for the washer. It provides the water for the sprinklers in the washer to wash the produce and the water comes from the local water supply at the fuel station. Over here we have a chain system and it's connected to this large gear which drives the drive shaft of the conveyor which we talked about previously and the chains also drive these big and small cogs over here which actually drive the bristle rollers in the washer. A curious thing is that it uh, the way these chains and cogs are connected it allows the bristles to move counterclockwise to each other. These are the bristles here and they basically use their kind of rough surface with these fine little toothed combs to actually clean the surface of the produce as it moves through and as it's washed by the soaker. Over here this is the third component of the TWH1650. This is the water absorber and what this basically is is um, sponge wrapped rollers and the reason it's wrapped with sponge is to actually as the name say absorb the water from the soap produce that comes out the washer and goes onto these rollers. These rollers are powered by these cogs which are driven by these chain gears that, that are connected to the drive pulley here. This is the last component of the TW1650, this is the packaging table and this is basically the surface of the packaging table for an idea of the material is basically it basically is cotton board material like household cotton board material on top of the table here we have a collar that actually has a key and this locks the table down into position this little gap you see here this is the inlet to the packaging table this is basically where the water absorber ends and the produce goes onto the packaging table Over here we have the underneath of the packaging table and what you can see here is a large pulley which is connected to a smaller pulley via a rubber drive belt and this smaller pulley is connected to the shaft of this electric motor here which is the second electric motor in the system and is mounted independently to the packaging table and it basically exclusively is used to turn the packaging table. Over here we just have a shaft which is freely moving and mounted at this flat C-section here and this shaft basically allows for the turning of the pulley and by extension the table. This rubber wheel that you can see here, there are basically six of these mounted at like a hexagonal point position around the circular frame of the table itself. And what they do is they provide a rolling um, mount surface for the table to actually rest on as it turns and rolls. This here is the electric motor. It's as far as you can see of the, from the brand Dayton and it's a quarter horsepower motor that runs on 115 volt power supply at 60 hertz and it's a single phase motor so nothing fancy here not a, it's not a heavy duty industrial motor which it wouldn't be since it's just running a small packaging table system 
optional decomposition of TWH1650. This is a procedure by which the machine functions. Firstly, the system must be energized and unclean produce must be placed on the conveyor belt which transports it to the washer. The washer removes any debris from the surface of the produce before transporting it to the water absorber which removes any excess water on the surface of the produce. The water absorber transports the produce to the packing table where laborers handle the packaging. This is a black box of TEWH1650 which shows the inputs and outputs of the system. The material inputs are produced and water which is used by the washer and outputs are cleansed produced and water waste. The energy used by the system are electrical, mechanical and human and the outputs are mainly in losses in the form of heat, sound, vibration and human fatigue. Information signals input into the machine are turn on machine, dispense, produce on receiver belt conveyor and output for informational signals are turn off machine after use. This is the functional decomposition of the rotary packing table. Firstly, the system must be energized, which is basically energizing the electric motor to allow the table to rotate continuously. Um, the producers receive from the previous subcomponent, which is the water absorber. While the table rotates, it evenly distributes the produce across the tables, of which makes it easily accessible to the packers. This is a black box of the rotary packing table, which shows the inputs and outputs of the system. The material input into the system is in the form of cleanse produced, and the output material is produced ready to be packaged. The energy used by the system are electrical and mechanical, and the output energy, which is in the form of losses, are heat, sound, and vibration. The information signal input into the system is basically the tables are rotating constantly at 3 rpm while the information signal output of the system is either stopping the tables are from rotating or either allowing it to continuously rotate. Main findings, packaging table problems and their possible solution. At first glance it was noticed that the metal frame and some mechanical components were rusting. This meant that a more suitable corrosion resistant paint should be used. Efficiency improvements for the rotary packing table. Weight reduction was also possible since the tabletop was excessively thick and the drive shaft was unnecessarily heavy. The tabletop can be made thinner and both the tabletop and drive shaft can be fabricated from lighter, more durable material. The, the reduction in weight would require a lower torque motor to rotate the table resulting in a more efficient system. Additionally, the rotary packing table was unnecessarily oversized for its purpose. It can be downscaled to perform the same task more efficiently while accommodating less space. Redesigning possibilities. To further improve efficiency, the system could be redesigned without a motor, completing the required functions by utilizing gravity. Structural modification. The frame of the table could have been made could have been reinforced better while reducing the amount of material used. As can be seen, the process is identical to the original rotary packing table, but looking at the output material, the produce is now being self-packaged into boxes ready for distribution. So revising the procedure, 1. Energize the system. 2. Continuously collect clean produce from a water absorber and three transport produce into boxes or bags or crates. The morphological chart describes alternative ways of performing a function. For example, to distribute produce into boxes we can use manual labor in which laborers place produce into boxes. We can use robotic arms or we could create a part in which produce flow into boxes. It must be noted that the advantages and disadvantages of each alternative must be considered when creating a concept. This is PX1 or Packaging Experimental 1, our first alternative. How it works is the table's axle is modified to a hinged axle that allows the table to tip at an angle while still rotating on that horizon. The table would 
collect produce from the inlet and the weight of the produce will be measured by an LVDT type sensor and when the weight reaches the amount of produce equivalent to fill one box the solenoid will activate and tip the table down to the lower outlet access port where the produce will flow out and fall into the box and it is a time system so after a given period of time it would tip back up and the other produce would flow onto the table also this table has a kind of lip so when it moves up the inlet is blocked putting the px1 aside we continue to brainstorm on designs that were independent of an electric motor the px2 utilizes the momentum of the produce combined with the effects of gravity to transfer them into boxes using a guided path system the cleaned produce would enter the device at the inlet and roll down to the exit. Rollers were used since not all produce would have a rounded geometry to provide its own rotational translation. When a box is full to satisfaction, a laborer can pause the outflow by slowly raising and securing the closed flap located at the outlet of the device. After the box is changed, he can gently lower the flap and continue the packaging process. This alternative would replace a rotary packing table with a completely new device. This device would be capable of weighing the produce and then dispensing it when the required weight is achieved. The mechanism which would make the system function is made of of both a magnet and a counterbalance mass. The system works under the simple principle of mass distribution and the procedure by which it operates is firstly, produce would enter the produce collector which is tilted at a slight angle to allow the produce to roll to the narrow end of the collector. Secondly, the counterbalance mass would be attached below the inlet end of the produce collector. Thirdly, the magnet would be located below the produce collector outlet on a platform which would support the collector when it tilts to dispense the produce. When the collector tilts, the magnet would engage with the metal surface below the produce collector and the total compressive force produced by both the magnet and the produce would keep the collector in the tilted position. In the tilted position, no additional produce is allowed to enter the collector as the inlet was cut high on the back plate. When all the produce exits the collector, the counterbalance mass, mass would disengage the magnet as the mass of the counterbalance would have a greater tension force than the attraction force of the magnet, thus resetting the system. The selection matrix assists us in choosing the best concept. It compares the relative weightings of the functions with the weighted metric for each device and tallies a value. The largest value indicates the dominant concept. Although PX2 and PX3 resulted in a close tally, PX2, that is the roller system, was easier to clean and reigned dominant of the three concepts. After comparing all the concepts, PX2 was found to be the superior design.